In this video, I'm going to talk about how some data points can affect regression more than others. Typically, any data point that deviates in a major way from the overall pattern of data is called an outlier. For example, we can have a data point with an unusually large x value, an unusually large y value, or both. Outliers could be mistakes, large fluctuations, or just the expected result at large values of the input variable. There are a variety of statistical metrics designed to show how much an outlier, or any point, affects the results of a regression. One such measure is leverage. It's a measure of how far a particular x value is from the rest of the x values. It has a formal definition as the change in the prediction at observation i due to a change in the value at observation i. For linear regression, there's an exact formula, but we won't really need it. To get some intuition for leverage, let's have a look at a fit to some data. Imagine we put a fulcrum at the center of the line of best fit. Think of the data points as pulling or pushing on the line. The further they are from the fulcrum, the more force they can exert. Hence, the more they can affect the slope. The red point here has low leverage. It can't exert much force on the lever because it's close to the fulcrum. This point has high leverage. It can exert a lot of force on the lever. But just because it can, doesn't mean it will. The point here is very close to the line of best fit, so it's happy with the line where it is. That is, the residual between the data point and the line is small. This point, on the other hand, has the potential to exert a lot of force on the lever, and its residual is quite large. Hence, if we add it to the fit of the blue data, it will use its leverage to influence the slope of the line of best fit. This brings us nicely onto the idea of the influence of a data point. Influence is the effect a single observation has on the outcome of calculation. For us, it is a measure of how much a single data point affects the values of the parameters obtained in a model fit. There are lots of ways to formalize this. Some common ones are what's called Cook's D, DF beta, and DF fits. The simplest one, in my opinion, is DF beta. It is estimated by a leave one out procedure similar to jackknife. It's simply the difference in the parameter value using all the data points compared to doing the fit without the ith data point. It will help to look at a simple linear regression to build some intuition. If we add this outlier point, how will the slope change? It turns out to change by very little. The DF beta value for the red point is 0.01. Thus, the point is an outlier and has high leverage, but it's not influential. On the other hand, this point is a high leverage outlier, which does influence the slope quite a lot. The DF beta score for this point is minus 0.18. There is a nice diagnostic plot you can use to study all the data in one go and look for influential observations, but first we have to introduce one more idea. We start with one of the assumptions of linear regression. The errors are independent and have constant variance. The residuals are estimates of the errors, but they don't satisfy these conditions. However, it can be shown that the quantity ti, which is the residual divided by the square root of 1 minus the leverage times an estimate of the standard deviation, does have constant variance. This is basically due to the fact that linear regression always does a better job of fitting the high leverage points than the low leverage ones. Thus, the residual at the edges is less than the residual in the middle. Studentizing, which is what this process is called, controls for this and puts all the points back on an equal footing. An influence plot is a plot of studentized residuals against leverage. If we go back to this data set, the corresponding influence plot looks like this. Here we see we have one very high leverage point, the one on the extreme right, which corresponds to the outlier. However, it is quite a low residual. It's close to zero, represented by the dashed line. This plot is produced with the stats models library in Python, which we'll talk about in the workshop. This package also uses an influence metric, not DF beta, but instead a different one called Cooks D, to control the size of the points, with higher influence points being larger. Thus, the high leverage outlier is not particularly influential. The influence plot for this data set looks like this. We can see a point with high leverage and large residual. The Cook's D score is also very large, hence we can confidently say it's an influential point. As a final example, take this data set. The red point is close to the average X value, but is still a distant outlier. Here we see a low leverage, high residual point with fairly large influence. Even if you don't compute an influence plot very often, keep in mind the difference between an outlier and an influential observation, and recall that influence is due to the interplay of leverage, being far from the average value of x, and residual, the observation being far from the prediction.